You're watching Swanee's Cricket Show on Joe, together with Rubicon. Swanee's Cricket Show here on Joe together with Rubicon. I'm Nick Bright. He's Graham Swan. Come on, come on, Swan. UK hip hop for Rocket. For Rocket. Oh, no. UK hip hop. I'm a bit disappointed at the smoke. I thought we'd have more smoke than we had than loads had. before. There we go. There's Sorry. a little bit. There's I, a, let's, the let's get in here. Sorry. Let's get in here for, so we can discuss all the goings on from the World Cup. Second week in, what have you made of it, Swanee? Well, obviously, England are now favourites again. Come on, England! Because they destroyed the might of Bangladesh down in Cardiff. Uh, but they played brilliant cricket to do it, so I'm very happy. But they dropped the off-spinner, so I'm very grumpy, because you never drop an off-spinner. No. Um, but all in all, and the Aussies lost as well to... Uh, hey! Um, and so, yeah, it's been great, it's been great. Um, I can't wait. It was a bit bittersweet, that um, Bangladesh game for me, only because, obviously, I'm supporting England, but... You have Bangladesh in the sweepstake, don't you? Well, it's not that. It's I came on here and I mentioned Bangladesh <laughs> in the first week and <laughs> you, you and Ish laughed me out of the door, like, yeah. yeah, they got no chance, but... And then all of a sudden they were better than England. No, but England played well. Um, you know, that 100 from Jason Roy, my word, mm. some of the shots he was playing. He's a machine. Well, well, sticking with England... Yeah. There's an injury concern around Josh Butler now, isn't there? I mean, how, how much are we going to miss him if, it's, if it is what... Well, if, it, I'll if, tell it, you if what, it's as bad as we potentially he's, think? He's that big uh, an element to the England side. If he doesn't play, I don't think England have a chance of winning it. Really? Really, that wow. big. Especially because the last 10, 15 overs with a bat, he is the main man. He's the, he's the reason England can get the, the huge total. So, come on, Joss. Pray oh, for Joss. Don't say that. Don't say that. Fine. It'll what, be fine. What about the booing of um, Steve Smith? Do, do, do you like that as a, a as an ex-player? No, what? I don't. I don't. I think it just brings everything. It makes it boorish. It makes it football. I don't think we need to do it. I don't think anyone needs to do it. Virat Kohli, absolute class, um, to walk off the field mm. or up to the fans and get them to applaud him rather than boo. Virat Kohli, you are my hero. Yes. Well done, son. And what a player, anyway. He is. Um, but what about Jason Roy's century celebration? Go on, Jace. What about it? Come on, he ran into the umpire. Well, why not take him out? <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, he didn't do it on purpose. No. But, you know, um, if you're going to drop your shoulder, do it on the umps. Yeah. Because the amount of times you've been triggered and fired off in, in your career. There was, <laughs> there was quite a lot of impact in that, though, I thought. You he's, know, he's, like... he's strong as well. well. If he played rugby, he'd definitely be inside centre as well. He'd be crash ball. He's, he's, a, good, he's a sportsman, put it that way. That's a, that's a different Joe podcast, in case you're wondering, guys. Yeah. <laughs> but it's a matter of time before we're doing that one, surely. <laughs> I've got no chance of doing that one, mate, I tell you. Um, ball tampering. Have you, have you seen all this that's floating around on social media from, uh, from Australia again? Yeah, I've seen it. I think everyone's just looking for something. As far as I'm concerned, Adam Zampa's got his hand in his pocket. What he's doing in there, who knows? When I put my hands in my pockets, they're either cold <laughs> or I was feeling lonely. So um, I don't know what he's doing, but it's not going to be sandpaper, people. You don't put your fingers on sandpaper, then on a cricket ball. Um, he doesn't put the ball in his pocket, as far as I know. Um, I think everyone should just let it go, to be honest. Yeah, right, I reckon we should get our guest on. Absolutely. I'm, I'm so looking forward to having this guest on. We spoke about this before we'd even started yep. the, the, the podcast, and it's actually happened. Now, this man, he's taken 167 wickets what? for England. Oh, yeah, 167. Oh, yeah. He's an absolute cracker, one of the best finger spinners we've ever seen. Oh, Monty Panasar's in the building. Come on, Monty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's only one. <laughs> Come on, Monty. Good to see you, mate. Have a seat. Yeah, Sit yeah. down. We've got some Rubicon there for you. I don't know what flavour it is, but help yourself. It's um, nicer. I keep swinging what, at it. What flavour is it? I don't know. It's all right. Well done. Get Thanks. it done. Thank you. Right. Not, that, not that we're selling out to the sponsors or anything, but oh my word, this is good. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm, I'm going to kind of kick this off, um, but really I want to hear stories from you guys and kind of the dynamic between you guys, because you know, you're both yeah. ex-England players and I know the people want to hear and, 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 and you know, listen to those. So, Monty, we'll start with you. What was it like playing with this man, Graham Swan? Oh, I, I, I love playing with uh, Swanee. He kind of like, I used to be like this little badger, you know, love, love to bowl all the time. And then Swanee, he just relaxed cricket, bring on the big boys, used to get them out. I remember him taking, uh, John T. Rhodes was playing this amazing innings for Gloucester and I was getting whacked everywhere. And then Swanee came on to bowl, nice loop, nice drop, and then bang, gets him out, caught deep uh, square leg. Short leg. Probably. No, no, it's <laughs> quite a top bed sweep, and he just, you know, just I loved how he played the game. Tell you what I loved about Monty, the boyhood innocence of this man. 
Honestly, when he was 18, 19, do you remember this at Northampton? Yo, so wet behind the ears, it was ridiculous, by the way. <laughs> but, I mean, Monty's fielding, where he ended up as being a good fielder in the end, is the greatest improvement I've ever seen of anybody at anything. Because when he first started county cricket, the worst field I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Fair to say that you weren't far off. You're absolutely right. And I remember Swanee saying, you know, you, you remind me of Edward Scissorhands. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but we had a coach, Nick Cook, who's, yeah. who's now a first-class umpire by Beast, if you're watching. He was our second team coach at Northampton. He was a hard taskmaster, but he liked a bit of fun. Last game of the season, we were at Belper Meadows. Hello, Derbyshire, are you there? Belper, beautiful place. <laughs> Um, and second team cricket, what you get is old people who turn up to watch it and they bring their rugs and everything, but turn up at like 10 o'clock in the morning and watch the warm-ups as well. Last game of the season, so Beast decided he'd do drop a catch, you take a piece of your clothing off. And he's hitting high catches and obviously everyone's going, Ooh. Monty can't lay a finger on anything <laughs> and he's down, I swear to God, to his jock strap. No <laughs> shoes, no boots, anything. It's wet in the morning. Jock strap. And Nick Cook goes, Monty, if you drop this catch, you're taking that off. He goes, no problem, wax it up. Of course he drops it. Uh, Get that off now! No. Monty refuses, no, I can't do it. Okay, rightly so, by the way, I can't do it, I can't do it. But he said, take it off now! He's going, no, I'm not, I'm not. Nick Cook chasing him with the balls. Take your pants off, Monty! <laughs> <laughs> like it Forrest, was magnificent. I was, I was like Forrest Gump then. <laughs> Honestly, it was magnificent. <laughs> Hello, beast, if you're there. What a hero. So it took something extreme to get you moving that fast in the field then, quite clearly. Yeah. But yeah. Right, honestly, where Monty ended up as a fielder is the greatest improvement of, it, of any human being I've seen at anything. That's what Magnificent. Like. I, lo I love stories yeah, like thanks, that. Mate. I, I, on, I, yeah. I want to hear the story no. about your first test wicket. Can you remember who it was? <laughs> yeah, oh well. <laughs> it's got to be the great, isn't it? The god of cricket. The main man. No, not me. No. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, who was it? Sachin Tendulkar. Sachin Tendulkar! Oh, yeah. Come on, the he's great a, man. He's a, hello, Sachin, he's in my... Uh, <laughs> hello, how, how did that feel when you, when you, you know, you, you got the god of cricket? Not just the god, Monty's god of cricket yeah. as well. Yeah. You, you, no one has ever revered a human being like Monty revered Sachin Tendulkar as well. D did you feel a little bit bad as well as, like, really good? Or were you just like, no, nope, I'm loving this? Well, I, I was thinking, I'll let him die. Why did you do that for? <laughs> you should have put your finger down. God, kept, I, I, I enjoyed bowling to him, not getting him out. You cause... became the least popular Indian on the planet. That, <laughs> yeah. that, that was the problem in India as well. <laughs> exactly. Like, the population of India is 1.6 billion. Now, that's 20% of the world's population who hates me on that day. <laughs> Just on that day. It's also a, a political geography lesson here when you got Monty. This is good. <laughs> Tell us more, Monty. Well, what, what more would you like to know? I'm a, I'm a uh, Donald Trump fan. Well, we can edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> OK. I think we should take it back to the cricket and, and the bowling, actually, because I mean, I've got here that you, <laughs> you started as a medium pacer, right? So yeah. why, did you, why did you end up switching? It, it's because um, I remember Paul Taylor. And whenever I see him or whenever I, um, people ask me, how did you change from a fast bowler you know, to a spinner? It was basically Paul Taylor. He saw something, he goes, you know what, you're bowling backwards, you're not bowling quick as he should be, and uh, why don't you try a spin? So I tried spin, and every ball on, on the money, turn and bounce. So whenever I see, one. the real, to be honest, my, my real god in cricket is Paul Taylor. Right. He, if he never gave me that advice, um, I don't think I would have been a spinner right now. Good so old. Paul Turner, if you're watching this, is, is this what you do on YouTube? You have to yeah. say that if you're watching this? <laughs> you can do whatever you want on yeah. here, man. There's no, so, there's no rules. That's oh, why right. we got Rocket in. Oh, no. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> so Mia Swanee, Rody. I hope you're watching this. We're thinking of you, mate. So Paul Taylor oh, was a left arm seamer yeah. who played for North Ants. He used to be my, uh, the travelling partner in the car. The fastest driver I've ever been with. Brilliant. I mean, obviously, always 70 on the motorway. If uh, Chief Constable of Bedfordshire was watching, that wasn't us that time. <laughs> Classic Swanee. He's on form today, isn't he? Um, Monty, I wanted to ask you some, some dirt on Swanee, really, actually, because, yeah. you know, we, we have him here every week. When and... I say you can say anything you want, this is where you don't. <laughs> OK. He's, he's dishing the dirt on his ex-teammates, so now we've got someone who might, might, might be able to dish some dirt on him. So what's he like? You know, what's he, is, he, is he a good traveller, a good trainer, you know, good crack? I, I want to hear some, some stuff. I think Swanee was... Uh, on his 
best form when it was a rainy day. We'll be like, it's raining, get the cards out. Swanee does all these impressions and we'll be in stitches, like literally just crying of laughter. <laughs> How funny Swanee is. I'm glad Swanee you got money on. This is awesome. Keep you know going. What I mean? <laughs> How much do they pay you? This? Are you hearing this? Yeah. I am still funny as well. I know, and I, 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 it surprises me why doesn't he have his own like comedy show or something oh, like that? Because this great. guy is hilarious, trust me. Like he just lives oh, up the dressing room, <laughs> man. <laughs> We used to sit in the bus, and I remember, how does he know the words to every song, you know, like word by word? Do you yeah. recite them? He's got, got, he's got this natural ability where he just sings the song and he knows the exact word. Yeah, he's like a walking jukebox. Yeah. He's yeah. a walking jukebox, that's what he yeah. is. It's I grew up around music, what can I say? Yeah. It's funny you say that, because on week one of this podcast, yeah. um, Swanee found out that I lived in Walthamstow, which is where <laughs> East 17 are from, the band. Yeah. And then he just kept piping East 17. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody in the house, <laughs> love! Just, <laughs> just constantly. One love, one well, God. It is a big change. East 17, oh, putting Walthamstow on the map oh, well, before you. <laughs> what about, it's all right. <laughs> there you go. There you go. That's, that's what's a bit you. Uh, now, about about your colour, concern about... About your creep in the house of love. Everybody is free. <laughs> I knew this was going to be it's a great show. Right. This is gonna it's be, all this great. right. It's all really right. It's all right. <laughs> this is super. Honestly. We haven't even got to the impression. You actually look like one of the members when we were 17. <laughs> Don't you think? No, you've aged well. <laughs> Lead singer, I reckon. I'm not actually him, in case anybody was wondering. It's not know. Brian Harvey. Yeah, I'm, I'm not him. <laughs> but um, I just wanted to take it um, in, a, in a slightly more serious direction Monty with oh, you because have to? this is great fun. No no we're yeah, gonna we're, is... don't worry we're gonna get back to the fun okay. and games but right. I feel like this is important because off the field you've very openly talked about the, the mental health issues that you've suffered over the years. You know you were diagnosed with um, paranoia. Um, how did that manifest itself? I, I think it just it just happened like when my confidence um, was slightly low just got these random thoughts in my head thinking oh this is that this is this is what and suddenly you know that conversation um, I think cricket obviously does have that slight issue of isolating yourself from other sports so you know you're, you're with your teammates all day and then you want to have time you know to yourself or you want to get away from cricket and and that's the real kind of like I think you know that's where you really kind of get all these negative thoughts in your head the conversations you have with yourself and isolation you know Did isolation you is a it's, it's a key factor to uh, developing these mental health issues. Did, did you get those um, negative thoughts and things like that when you were playing? You know, when you were bowling, when you were, you know, in, in big games? Was it happening then? I think when I was in a good place, uh, I, I would forget about it. I think when I put pressure on myself. And it was interesting. I remember I, I talked about Swanee a lot. And it was more of a, you know, Swanee became the number one spinner. And it was about me. How do I now take Swanee's place. And I knew Swanee was always, you know, he's a better slip fielder, better batsman, and bowling-wise as well. You know, tactically, I thought he was a smarter bowler than me. You know, he played more white ball cricket. He knew how to get batsmen out, especially in white ball. I think you've got to think a lot more than red ball. You know, you can just bowl pressure, 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 let the batsman make the mistake. So I knew all round he was a better cricketer. And I just had to um, accept that, which obviously I did eventually. But... Um, you know, this is the unnecessary pressure you got to, you're putting on yourself, you know, you, you've got to accept, you know, he's a better cricketer and I've just got to, I know that when there'll be two spinners playing, if it's a turning deck, then me and Swanee, you know, like we had some good times together in India did. and Pakistan, it, it, yeah, it was good. You know, it's funny, it's funny you say you use the word isolation there and, you know, t to me as a fan, I just imagine all of you guys who are playing in, in the team hanging out together all the time. I, I don't really imagine isolation when I think of a team sport. But what's the reality? Did, did, did you, were you able to lean on your teammates at all when you were going through tough times or did you feel, like, really alone? I think for me, I was in denial for a long period of time. Um, I found it difficult to even, you know, go up to the coach or my teammates and emotionally, you know, talk about my emotions, talk about my thoughts, because I thought they'd probably think, oh, what a weirdo, you know, or well, why is he speaking like that? Or, or maybe I needed like a, like a best mate where I could have just openly talk about anything I wanted. And th that's why I encourage now, like I remember speaking, you know, to, on, on the PCA, what would you... What would people learn from that is, is try and get a best mate, try and develop a, a real good friend, not like a teammate, a friend in, in, within the team that you can just talk about anything and, and, and you kind of help each other. To be fair, I mean, this isn't that long ago, is it? And yet it still wouldn't have been the norm to do that. If you'd have gone to your coach and said, look, emotionally I'm not feeling 
here for the game, you know, this and that's going wrong, you would have been viewed as, oh, God, he's, he's damaged, damaged products here. He's gone batshit crazy sort of thing. And so, yeah, it, it must have been hard. Like, now it's great, because everything that's come out recently, and that whole mental health awareness week not long ago, I think in sport, and as a bloke as well, you're not judged by your peers anymore. You imagine, mm. like, five or six years ago saying, actually, lads, I'm, emotionally, I'm not really there today. You've got, but you've got 15 other people in the squad going, yeah. you know, he's not a bloke, he's not a real bloke. So I think where we've got to now is amazing in a short space of time, but it just wasn't right. It wasn't the right environment to do it. It's like, you know, when Steve Davis came out as gay as well, when we played cricket. Like, now if that happened, it wouldn't be an issue. No, almost. no. It'd be like, well, whatever, but it was a massive deal for him. When he came out. Well, one of the things, because you've mentioned on this show in the past, Swanee, that you, you know you and Jimmy Anderson were really, really close. Yeah. And just say if you were going through any problems or whatever, whatever they may be, relationship problems, whatever, would you confide in him? Were you that were you that close to him? Was yeah. it that kind of relationship? Yeah, but I mean, that was almost because we went beyond just teammates sort of thing. We we were proper mates off the field by then as well. Um, but we had an awful lot in common. Yeah. You know, just for both white middle-aged lads who love golf and stuff. Monty was the only Sikh in the team. You know, very, you know, didn't have anything sort of in common with a lot of people, did you? So it was very hard um, for Mont, I should imagine, to have that sort of being able to lean on someone like that. Yeah, well, it's really great, you know, that we're, we're seeing you come out the other side of that. Um, and you said recently that you want people to remember the good Monty, but it takes a while to eradicate the bad memories. So what did you just, what did you mean by that quote? Well, I think it's more about, you know, people's doubts. They think, oh, this is how we behaved at Essex. Um, there was some, you know, uh, erratic behaviour from me, which I look back now, I think, why did I behave like that? You know, I shouldn't have behaved in that, in, in that manner. And um, you're, you're trying to... What it is, you're trying to... If I'm positive within myself and my self-belief self is strong, then hopefully I'm able to... Um, there'll be 100 people who have doubts, you know, sitting there thinking they're doubting, you know, with Monty. We just want him to be happy. That's much more than enough. But, you know, my desire is that I will play professional cricket again. And it's about me keeping positive frame of mind, which then... Out of the hundred, there'll be a few people who start believing, and then yeah. suddenly that 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 starts changing. But it has to come from within, within me first. Yeah. Well, that's good, mate. I'm, yeah. I'm proud of you, mate. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, mate. Go and son. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. no. Honestly, and, and you, you touched on it there because that was going to be my next question. You never actually retired from from cricket, so you, you, you're still hoping to do a job, yeah? Yeah. For me, I think once you're retired, then um, you can go into anything you want, um, whatever field you know you want to go into. But for me. I still have that passion, that desire. I felt like that golden period as spinners um, between 30 to 35, I kind of missed out on, where I think hopefully in the next three or four years, if I can, you know, obviously, let's just take the first step at a time, yeah. you know, play this year, and then if I can play for a few more years, then that golden period for a spinner where they just bowl really well, take lots of wickets, win games for teams, hopefully I can, I can do that. That's it. If you're watching teams, Monty's available. Get him in. Yeah. Get him in. And, and I'm looking forward to uh, seeing some of his. I'm not. No, he said you. that. I don't yeah. really want to face him. <laughs> I was hoping to just dish up a couple of our follies, but. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, you are watching and listening, of course, to Swanee's Cricket Show on Joe together with Rubicon. Uh, we're here every week throughout the Cricket World Cup and the Ashes. Now, the TKO boys, um, they've been over in New York. And on Thursday, you can hear their interview uh, with two-weight world champion Heather Hardy ahead of her fight on Saturday at Madison Square Garden. So the only way that I actually broke onto the scene was I sold a bunch of tickets. I used to tell my promoter, Lou, like... Put me on the show, I guarantee you $10,000 in tickets. I will sell you, hand them to me, I'll sell them. And I was making like an $800 purse to do these fights and selling 10, 15 grand in tickets. And I did it all the way up until I went 15 and 0. And that's kind of what prompted my switch to MMA because I was 15 and 0, I was defending my WBC title at the Barclays Center and I sold $40,000 in tickets, right? That's like over 250 seats I, I filled for this fight. And they put me on first before the doors even opened and I was defending my title. I was doing, I think, a 10 round fight. Um, I made under $7,000 and I sold 40 grand in tickets. And they put, and I had to make my ring walk with nobody there to clap their hands. That's Heather the Heat Hardy, who's this week's guest on TKO. This is Swanee's Cricket Show. I'm Nick Bright, along with Graham Swan and the England oh, spinner yes. Monty Panasar. Oh, well. Now, speaking of New York, did you
Did you know about the cricket scene there? Well, nor did we. It's a surprise for us a lot to see, uh, to come all the way from London to see you guys so into cricket. Is there a big cricketing background here in New York? Yes. We have a lot of leagues in New York and every summer the guys them came and play out. In New York, it's all about West Indian and India and Pakistan, that's it. It's nothing else with the American. American is not too much partake in cricket in, in the United States. So these kind of wonderful immigrant communities playing the game that they grew up. This is, this is from the Caribbean. This is, our, this is our culture, the West Indies culture of cricket. Except we don't get the rum here. <laughs> well, it's still early, so that'll come in a while. Not compared to England. In the US, I wouldn't say it's the most popular, but definitely around the world, and it's becoming more popular every every, uh, every time you get a different format of the game, and it gets more exciting every time. Well, cricket has been here forever, even before I was even born. Um, and it's always been a thing, because uh, most of the competitive cricket has been played in New York. And there are a lot of leagues also in New York. Um, we, we, at one point, we had about seven. All right, so and we have hundreds of teams today. as well we'll that plays hardball and cricket, and you find that a lot of test players, a lot of um, national players pass through mm -hmm. here. And as a matter of fact, they've also been built here, especially today. You'll find a lot of national cricketers, West Indies cricketers. So, who's going to win today? Well, we hope to do that. Marshall comes around, makes a very good save. So, a great throw there by Xavier Marshall. You know, you're a, you're a former former test cricketer. This is uh, it's amazing to find you here. Yeah, um, it's been um, a while now we've been playing, but um, we just started to get the, the recognition that um, we've been working hard so for over the past few years. So it's two. good and it will continue growing. Being um, playing test cricket, yeah, test cricket and, and, and coming here to play, I think it's um, a great achievement for me. Also to get in the uh, USA setup, it was good for me. Just a good feeling to continue to play cricket. Yeah, and keep myself fit. This happens every Sunday. Yeah. Does it really? Yeah, every Sunday. I'll let you take this. Uh, Xavier's up for the catch. Can he get it on the boundary? Yes, he can. Sensational catch. Good catch. Well judged. Great, great catch there. I mean, I didn't put you off either. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> lovely catch. Absolutely lovely catch there on the boundary. Can't quite believe Xavier Marshall's just popped up there, just randomly. New York. How you doing, Xavier? You all right? Well, you actually played against him in 2009. Yeah, I think I did. You remember it? or? Well, I remember his name. Right, it's just okay. cool, isn't it? Any, anyone called Xavier's got to be cool. Yeah, until, he, until he rocked that hairdo and then I think he's trying a bit hard listen, now, <laughs> to be honest. Don't slate the hairdo too much. I mean, I get a lot of that. Um, also, our thanks to the members of the New York Metropolitan Cricket League. Um, ever fancy playing abroad, either of you guys? I, I, I know a couple of you haven't. You haven't think, 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 apart from the IPL, but have you ever fancied, you know, something like that? Uh, not really. No, why? Um, I don't know. I've just I've never really got round to it. I've been playing professional cricket since I was 16 and, um, and then finished and it's just all eyes on the Joe show from there. <laughs> <laughs> Mont, you played in South Africa though, didn't you? Yeah, Tell I, us play about that. Yeah, I played um, <clears throat> for High Felt Lions uh, with Andre Nell, who um, played with us at Northlands. Andre Nell, remember Andre Nell? He was mad as a box of frogs, Andre <laughs> Nell. He, honestly, he was the biggest human being I've ever met. It was just a larger than life, fast bowler. And we used to play football in the mornings. Um, and he was terrible, truly appalling. He was a proper South African. He could play rugby, I bet, but he was dreadful at football. <laughs> and so no one had passed to him. And he would really get shitty about it. He'd go, pass to me, pass to me. <laughs> and then if he did pass to him, he was so annoyed that they had he'd pick the ball up and hoof it miles away. I'm not fetching it either, <laughs> like a big kid. He was hilarious. <laughs> but he was, and then he'd go out and bowl, be really angry about <laughs> fast speed of light at people. Why, why is it cricketers <laughs> love playing football in the warm up? What, it's what, because, what is that? well, listen, we have to go out and field for like 100 overs in a day or whatever. And it can be boring, it can be deathly boring if nothing's happening, the wicket's flat. For those 10 minutes, and we have to warm up every day for half an hour, for those 10 minutes of rather than just running up and down, touching a cone here or there, a bit of competitive football, every cricketer is a, you know, frustrated other sportsman, <laughs> either golf or tennis or football, and every cricketer thinks they're amazing at football, and we're all shit. <laughs> but that three-touch stuff, warming up, is just amazing. <laughs> Did you like uh, football, the, the football warm-up, Monty? See, I always thought my skills were far better than what my teammates thought of me. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> I thought I was a great left-back. It's a great way of putting it, actually. Yeah, I thought I was a great left-back, you know, pass a long ball, 
But I was, I was again, in that sort of slight Andre Nell category where no one would pass me the ball. <laughs> but I would actually go and fetch the ball, happily yeah, go and fetch the ball, it. hoping that someone would get but me involved in the game. We never passed you because you never got in space. That's right. basically it. OK. <laughs> Classic swan. You know what, there's some of the boys are at proper football, the England lads. Joss Butler, have you ever seen Joss playing? It's actually worth turning up early if you've got a ticket for a game with some of the Ashes or whatever. Turn up at, like, half nine and just watch their kick about. You see some proper footballers in there, like Josh Butler, Ben Stokes, very good player. Jimmy, don't run around a lot, Jimmy, these days, but very wise old being, very good on the ball. O.A. Shah, if you're watching O.A., my word. Joe Denley, when he first got in the England team, this is, what, ten years ago, we were playing at the Oval, Sky Sports were doing a piece um, on, on the game coming up, and we were playing football in the background. You see O.A. Shah come in, basically two-footed, take out Joe Denley, <laughs> messed up his cruciate ligament. He oh, didn't no. play, never played for England at that point. Oh. And, like, it could have ruined his entire career. Just completely, like, he was carrying a bit of weight then, oh, so he was a lot of momentum, couldn't <laughs> slow down. So he just clattered him, absolutely wiped him out. It was banned from that day, football got banned. Um, we had to play touch rugby until Trevor Bayliss came back and brought football back to it. You say he was carrying a bit of weight, what, like Adi Akinfenwa kind of weight no, no, here, no, you're no. talking? Not, or... the, not the monster. No, not, not quite that much. Uh, the beast, right. that's it, the beast. Now, Sorry, the youngster it. that you saw on that video uh, is called Matt Archibald. Um, he was commentating throughout the game, and he's pretty good. I think he's one for the future, to be honest with you. He sounded like a, a pro, but he wasn't bad at impressions either. Don't believe me? Take a look. Walked away there, that you can do an impression of Bumble. David Lloyd, come on, give us your best Bumble. All right, so it's going to be Joe Root and Ian Morgan batting. Joe Root's on strike, just playing a defensive shot, lots of swing. And outside off, Joe Root. He's got lots of swing on that, and definitely Joe Root can't do much with that. Just a front foot defence. Some lovely swing there from Trent Bolt. And definitely England will have some trouble with all this seam. Pitch has been taking quite some swing. Very good. Well done. Well done. You're a star. Good stuff, thank you. I, I always say kids that are that confident, that young, are going to go on to be great at something. Yeah, I think that was just we're saying he's good because he's a kid. Joe Root, he's a player who signed off. Stop, a super player, Joe. You know, leave it out there. Can't do much for that. Start the car. There's your bumble. <laughs> I mean, what was that? This, that was just a cocky little American stroke Australian kid. <laughs> sounding like Michael Clark. This, this reminds me slightly of that. Have you seen that clip of... Sorry, mate, if you're watching. Thanks for your time. Have you, have you seen that clip of Michael Owen absolutely pelting those balls past that uh, little kid in goal? It reminds me of that. You're having Com a go at this kid. Yeah. Com that... Competitive dad. You've actually, you know, gone early, but it works because we were going to ask you to do some impressions anyway. So I, you... I prefer the bit where I have a go at the kid. I like that. <laughs> keep it in. <laughs> keep it in. You've already done your David Lloyd, but what's your Kevin Peterson like? Ooh. Not great. No. It's Kevin. It's, I don't do, it's more of a generic, slightly Kemp up. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's all right. No. I it's, think it's all right. Kemp didn't like it. What? You, would you, would you, you think it's all right? I think it needs to a bit of higher pitch. It's a bit too. Go on, once got a good one. Oh, no, I can't do South African accents. I'm not that good. I'm, I'm, Neither no. can he. Well, um, that was. Uh, how, how do I? How do I? How do I get this South African twang? Give, me some, <coughs> give, give the viewers a bit of tips how to get these, you know, accents. I don't know. You just listen to it and you copy it. How's it, China? Yeah. Right. Uh, uh, I mean, I was China? lucky that we did how's have kept right. vessels. Yeah, so like that. Hey, how's it, my blue? A little bit like a yeah. gangster. Yeah. What are you yeah. talking about? No yeah. money. Yeah. You, you want to go, to go get the papers? Get the papers, huh? Yeah, you want, you want the you want the money? <laughs> That's all right, though. That's all right. Yeah. Ever since I can remember, I wanted to be a gangster, huh? Yeah, we go for margaritas, eh? Right. I'll, I've got to try and go through this list with you, Swanee, because we want to... A margarita? Yeah, I don't think the we're, gangsters drink margaritas. We're, 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 we're in New York now, you know? Pizza's big in Italian community. <laughs> <laughs> this is amazing. This is amazing. You're like John Coleshaw. This is it, man. This is the money and Guru Graham's on show. This, this is good. <laughs> I don't know where to go. This is amazing. I'm, I'm right. seeing... This is acting Monty. I've, I've, got, to, just, I've, I've got to try and get this back on track. Can you do Joe Root? Oh, oh Joe. Oh, no, I can do a comic, Joe. I can aeroplane. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Liam Gallagher. Yeah, right, yeah nice one. My new album's coming out next week. It's banging, you know what I mean? Man, just take a match for it. I'm miles on Saturday. <laughs> Radio X, you know what I mean? I, I love how Monty As copies... He could copy Swatty. I'm, I'm, I'm very hey, much man, enjoying Manchester, that. Manchester, you mad for it. <laughs> <laughs> that sounded quite South African, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. Now that... Was that a um, little KP there? Boris Johnson. <laughs> oh. No? No. Can't do that one? No. What, the man who's going to destroy the planet? <laughs> oh, believe if we can, 
Yes, Richard Leno. Believe in me, we can. can. Don't cut him off. Yes. That was boring. <laughs> Sorry. Believe in me, we can. Yes, we can. <laughs> it's a bit Churchill. That was a bit David Attenborough, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> we the need oceans are dying. It's, and we must save the planet. It's descended into chaos. Brilliant. Right, here's a good one you're, for you. You're in charge of this shit. Oh, I'm trying, mate. I'm trying. <laughs> it's got your name above the door. That's yeah. what I tell everyone. Monty Panesar. No. He did it last week. Come on, you oh, could no. do it. I can't do Mon. You can't. I'm very I can do, do regions very well. The odd person here or there. You're not even going to attempt it? No, I'm not. It's sitting next to me. It's got big, it's got big hands. <laughs> also, yeah. also, you've got the mastermind. No, I, did, uh, yeah, well, I, 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 I don't it. know if we were going to bring it up or not, but Monty, feel how heavy that is. It's what you could have won. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I mentioned that I won't serve your mastermind, but Monty didn't. But we won't go there. But can we can we go to the question uh, that I completely messed up and then it just went... Buh, 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 buh. Uh, well, we were talking. I don't know actually what. You, it, so, did you what, feel like white noise just going in front of your face? No, you I felt like wrong? I was one question behind. Right. So, so ask me a question and let me answer the question before, and then yeah. that's you're like dancing going. to the next song, sort of thing. Right? I used to yeah. do that as a radio feature on my yeah. radio show. <laughs> you have to answer the question that you heard before the. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so okay, what's the season where the leaves fall off the trees? It's, it's autumn, man. Yeah. Yeah. Oliver Twist. Yeah. <laughs> can you see the logic, viewers? Please, if you're tuning in. <laughs> if you can, there's a great book in it. And uh, do you look back at that and just go, oh my God, what was I doing there? Yeah, I, I just. You had I, a bad I, day at the office. Yeah, I wasn't listening to the questions and I always like yeah. playing one. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, listen, last week, uh, Rocket was here to do a minute with um, Owen Morgan and also did a minute with did you, Swanee. Uh, My favourite feature, that. I was... love Rocket. He's so... <laughs> you, what's this thing? What's this thing? What's Rocket. this thing? What's, 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 what's the fastest food in the world? Rocket. Oh, Rocket. Well, look, anyway, anyway, we need to get a minute with Monty. That's what we need to do. So, Rocket, come on in, Rocket. Yeah. Yeah. Rocket. 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 Right, get in there and, and I'll just hand it over to you, mate. Thanks, mate. Right, it's quick fire answer questions. The que answer the question he's actually asking okay. you, not the next right, one. So we've got a minute, okay? okay? Let's go. Your time starts now. Cricket World Cup. England. The Oval. Surrey. Sledging. Australia. Best bowler. Just Rupert Ma. Best batter. Joe Root. Best ever cricketer. Graham Swan. Worst ever cricketer. Monty Fanta. Cricket <laughs> highlight. Uh, uh, winning the Ashes in Australia. Cricket low light. Losing at Adelaide in Australia. Mastermind. Awful. Film. James Bond. TV programme. House of Cards. Music. Red Hot Chili Peppers. Song. Can't wait. Car. Ferrari. Food. Curry. Dessert. Ten. Um, apple crumble. Crisps. Uh, sensations. Cartoon. Five. Four. Thundercats. Three. Three. Destination. Two. Australia. That's it. I think we need to start explaining to people before they do that the Rocket is not going to drag you out of here and kick the living daylight out of you if you get any wrong, because Monty's little face <laughs> after I do that. Sheer panic. Thundercats! Oh, yes! What a shout <laughs> that is! Uh, I thought that you'd be more excited that he called you the best cricketer. No, no, no I was expecting that. I had a gun to his head. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, we need to have a quick look ahead to England against the West Indies yes. on Friday. Uh, it's interesting, this one, for me, because England's favourites going into the tournament, but on our very first show, the preview show yeah. this morning, you said that um, you quite fancied the West Indies as dark horses. So how do you see this one going? Um, I think West Indies haven't quite... You know, played as they could have done. But if they'd have beaten Australia in that game, that they were cruising, they should have won that. What are you doing? Um, I still think they're very dangerous, really dangerous, because they're going to run up and bowl. You know, they're going to bowl short, and the England batsmen are going to enjoy that. I think they're they're better when they bowl short. They haven't got a world class spinner, so I think England will beat them, beat them quite well, despite what happened in the West Indies for a couple of games not long ago. Um, but I still fancy the West Indies to really upset some big teams. But do you think, um, and Monty, you can jump in on this, looking at the West Indies batting lineup, obviously still got Chris Gale in there um, for his, his last 50-over um, World Cup anyway. Yeah. Uh, you know, if, if Chris Gale's on form... And he loves English bowlers as well. That's what I mean, you know. Yeah. It's, it, if, I mean, depending on, you know, the pitch conditions, so it's really hard to predict, but looking at this, would you prefer to be chasing or would you prefer to, you know... No, I'm... I, I, I'm so happy that the teams who have all liked chasing going into the World Cup have all come unstuck when they've tried to do it. Because I think, as a spin bowler, you always want to bowl second. You always want to bowl when the wickets deteriorated a bit. Um, and so I really enjoy that the teams who don't, no, no, we'll chase, we'll chase anything, haven't got it. 
weirdly in time. Yeah. So I, I like England batting first, and I think Owen Morgan should bat first if he wins a toss against the Windies. I tell you, Chris Gale's not necessarily the danger man, because if he gets runs at the top, you half expect that. It's the guys in the middle order, Nicholas Poor and people like that. Yeah. If they carry on what Gale starts, West Indies could post a monster total against anybody. What about Joffre Archer? This is a it's, it's, it's a big match for Joffre Archer. You know, lots of people will be talking about this. Um, but he is England's genuine pace man. Yeah. So just put me in the position, because both of you guys, you know, you would have been at the crease facing serious pace. Just try and put me and the, and the listeners and the viewers into the position of what's going through your head when you've got, like, a 90-mile-an-hour delivery about to come down at you? Well, mine were, the quicker people bowl at me, the more your beans are going. So you, your adrenaline's pumping. And I was just looking to hit everything. So, because I didn't bat up the order, I, I had licence to tee off, basically, wherever I batted, which suited me. If I had to, like, survive it and get 100, like proper batsmen do, I don't know what I'd been thinking, whether it's, like, survival or letting the ball go. I was just thinking, just by, I'm just going to hit it. I'm going to play on instinct and hit it as hard as I could. But it's, it's great. It's exciting when someone's bowling quick, but not when they're trying to kill you. Yeah, well, that's my next question. Monty, were you always scared of getting, getting whacked, you know, when you are at the crease? Because them balls, they're not soft, mate. Yeah, I used to come in <clears throat> at number 11 or when the second new ball is always due. <laughs> always when the second ball is due, right? <laughs> and I thought, please don't get up, please don't get up. The second ball's coming out and it eyes oh, out. And then I'm like... Yeah, I, I don't know any cricketers who went out there like frightened or scared of getting hit. You really? Don't wanna, you don't want to get out. But honestly, by the time you play like test cricket, especially you've played that much cricket and you've played that much bowling. And when you grow up, like the highest standard you get, you play, the bowling gets quicker and quicker anyway. And so it doesn't seem as fast as, like, when we face this, the, the, you know, the bat-fast machine here, like last week with Wahab Riaz by 180 <laughs> miles an hour, thanks very much. <laughs> That's ridiculous. I mean, it's never like that. And you're never thinking, oh, this could hurt me. Yeah. Um, I, 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 I'm guessing, you know, people that don't actually play cricket, they probably find that quite a strange thing to hear because, you know, when, as a fan, when you see batsmen getting walloped, you know, sometimes I have to go off injured and stuff like that. It, it, it's, it's, it's a serious thing. So, for me, that's quite surprising to hear you guys say that. Right, anyway, speaking of fast bowling, you yeah. mentioned the bat fast guys already. I reckon we should get out there and well, but, but it's in One week, can we face military medium like Jimmy Anderson? No. <laughs> no, come on, let's do this. Let's get out there. Come on, in, boys. Didn't get that joke, did you? Right, let's find out what the lads will be facing today, then. Um, who have we got for them? So, this week, we've got Joe Garner. Um, what? Let me take Joel Garner? <laughs> let me take you back to the 1979 World Cup uh, final, West Indies versus England. Uh, Joel Garner to Gooch. So, bit of pace for you boys. Oh, I, I know this one though, York's in. Yeah, York, uh, yeah. bit of in swing. I reckon you When right you said Joel Garner then, I immediately thought bouncer. No, 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 no kill me. Follow this week. Who knows, Swanee? We might be no, poker no, no, facing no, no. you. I know my cricket history, yeah. son. That's right. I know. <laughs> right, Mont, let's get down this end. This guy's 90 miles an hour. The safety of the netting. Right, here we go. Swanee's at the crease. I'll just listen to the words, whether they're getting louder or not. Just uh, warming up the machine. Here we go. We can oh, hear yeah. it now. I'm Wrong not... you than me, mate. No, no, I'm fine this week. <laughs> I, I didn't sleep for two days after Wahab awesome. Riaz bowled at 150 miles an hour at me. Right, here we go. Come on, Joel, what have you got? Here we go. Jesus Whoa. Christ. <laughs> How was that? Um, I've probably got four through the covers and um, caught an ambulance, sent me right on the shin. <laughs> right, so that's one. You've got to face it again. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't know the issue. Are you, the, the, are you actually hurt? No. Of course oh, I'm not. Jesus damn it. Christ. Right, here we go then. Right, I reckon, Mont, I'm going to give you a tip here. It swung in quite viciously. Oh! <laughs> I took the coward's option there. No <laughs> bat on ball. Yeah, four, four buys. Monty, your turn. Right, Mont, oh, you're up. Go this. <clears throat> You've had the advantage of actually seeing it. Yeah. It's quite slippery, Mont. I'll let you know. Right. Left hander. He's at the crease. The concentration on the face. <laughs> Bowl is running in. He's gone! Ooh, that was quick. Oh, wow! <laughs> <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> Didn't see that one coming. There's no ball, though. There's no ball, Mike. You get another go. Right. Right, we need to get Come the on, bells back on. Oh, no, no, you're all right. I don't want to get my massive all right. toes hurt. Come on, Mike. Let's try and get some bat on it. Come on, Mike. Come on, Monty. Crunch it, Monty. Here we go. And he's out again! Oh, 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 two out of two, he 
he's gone. Guys, you know how quick them bunkers are. Just like that. Just that it's, it's ridiculous. I mean, it's an amazing uh, machine. I like the optimism here as well. Doing this net up because you think we're going to smack it into it. That's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Jesus wet. Thanks, back fast boys. Right, Again. come on, lads. Let's Brilliant. get back yeah. in here because we've got to do Crichtonry. Right, take a seat <laughs> because we are diving into Rubicon's Urban Crichtonry. This is a celebration of weird and wonderful terminology used in the world of cricket. We're going to mix it up this week and we're going to give Swanee some cricketing terminology and he's going to come up with a great story to match it. Oh, nice. I mean, I don't know if the viewers realise that Swanee has got stories for days. Yeah. I mean, it, you just... Well, it used to rain a lot, like Monty said. I used to have to come up with things to keep people amused. So. Uh, well, listen, it's working. You've got a podcast out of it. So the first I've met word... I've you out of it, Nick. That's the best thing. <laughs> the first word this week... Everybody in the house love. <laughs> the first word this week is the ashes. The ashes. Uh, I'll give you a story about the ashes. How about the one where, first time I went in the ashes, 2009, couldn't wait to get my hands on that little urn. I mean, as a little boy, just want to touch the real Ashes trophy. And, you know, you win at the Oval and we walk around the pitch. There's Amazing. a huge St George's flag on the field. with this are singing Jerusalem and Land of Open Glory. Nothing for the four South African lads in our team. <laughs> um, and we get to the plinth anyway, and I try to get close to Straussy so I can, you know, get my fingers on this trophy. And as he lifted it up, it had a little sticker on the bottom saying, Lord Shop, £4.95. <laughs> no! I promise you. No! The greatest moment of my life shattered by fucking Lord Shop. Is that true? That's true. That and so you don't actually get to feel the, the real one. Oh, my God. There you go. Right, right. second word. Beamer. Beamer. I've got nothing for beamer. <laughs> Beamers used to be allowed in the game of cricket. Batting collapse. Batting collapse. My favourite one was the one in uh, Jamaica, um, because it got me back in the team. <laughs> in the West Indies. Monty was playing, weren't you? In Jamaica, and we got bowled out for 40-odd. Um, yeah. No, there's not a funny story to it. <laughs> Just, just got you back, got in, the back in the team. All right, so. I'm, I'm, sure, I'm sure you'll have a funny story about the next one. Stuart Broad. Well, playing against Australia once, and they, they were desperate to get it Broadly because he was tall, blonde, handsome, everything that they wanted to be. Um, so they really have a go, he really gets stuck in. But um, he's a bit stupid, Stu, so he didn't know what they were saying. No, he's not really. So, are they talking to me? I'm not sure. Ha. Um, anyway, so we're batting with him one day, and um, Mitchell Johnson thought they'd get stuck into him, and so started having a go with his sister, who worked in our changing room. And so he ran up in the bowl and made up a story. He goes, hey, mate, I've shagged your sister. Does that mean we're related? And broadly quick as a flash went, oh, no, it means we're even. <laughs> right, last one, Ricky Ponting. You must have a story Ricky there. Ponting. Um, I, I actually love Ricky Ponting. He's a much better bloke than any of the crowd will give him credit for. Um, he's the only person who ever sledged me in an Ashes test. In Monty's famous Ashes test at Cardiff when he saved the day. Well done, Mont. Cool. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Come, Monty. Yeah. Um, but going into that game, I'd, I'd only played half a dozen tests and I'd only been out once and I'd got a load of runs. Not a load of runs, <laughs> but about 80. That's and after the first innings, I got 47 out, and it meant my test average was the highest of any of the players on the field. Like, and we've got some of the greatest ever test players out there. And I got interviewed about it in the press conference, and I went, you know, the good will out, cream rises to the top, all <laughs> loudy dub, just tongue in cheek. Doesn't go down well with Australians because they don't understand it, bless them. Uh, still got the flying doctors on over there, aren't they? Um, anyway, as I went out to bat in the second innings, Ponting came into the field at a silly point, and he just said, I oh, think you're the best player out here, do you, mate? Best average, do you, have you? And then I just looked at him and went, oh, Richard, I didn't know you could read. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and you know when you've got someone because, like, the close field, like, the keeper, Brad Adding, laughed. He went, <laughs> what are you laughing at, Brett? <laughs> um, and that was it. So I never got anything said to me after that. <laughs> but I love Ricky. I, I love the sledging stories. And it's also good when Ricky Ponson actually showed how hard he is. Um, 2000, I think it was the same, or maybe the next series, he came into field at Silly Point at the Oval and Matty Price, and he smashed it, and he went straight into Ricky Ponton's mouth and, like, smashed a tooth out. Like, or maybe not a tooth, but blood just flew out with the ball and everything. And being, you know, English, he went, oh, my God, are you OK? <laughs> and Ponton just turned around and went, go off. <laughs> <laughs> just like that. <laughs> <laughs> with blood still spraying out of his mouth. <laughs> Right, that is it for this week. We are out of time. Thank you to Monty Panasar. Thank you. Come on. Thank you. Enjoy. Oh, by the way, by the way, just before we go, look at the size of his hands. Oh, look, yeah. look at yeah. Yeah. Look yeah. those fingers. No wonder he's spinning it so far. <laughs> Finger no spinning so all the time. Wow. Well, um, once again, Monty Panasar, everyone. Well,
Enjoy this week's games. Uh, don't forget TKO on the road in New York with Heather Hardy on Thursday. Good luck, Heather. And we'll be back right here on The Cricket Show next week. Bye. Woo!